All right, today we are on the road heading into southern Utah and on one of the most beautiful drives I've been on in a few years probably. I'm headed up the Highway 95 towards Hanksville and that's actually one of our destinations on this trip is a couple of spots around Hanksville. So right now we're cruising up this road that's essentially inside of a canyon and we've got a, a first stop today for some ancient Indian art that I'm really looking forward to checking out. So that'll be our next stop. Prehistoric Indian ruins and artifacts are scattered along the Colorado River and its tributary canyons. Evidence of this habitation is seen in many pictographs and petroglyphs that, do, that dot the canyon walls, including those of the North Wash and Hog Canyon. There she is, a figure known as the Moki Queen, not far from here. Let's go find her. So I just pulled off to the Hog Springs. Uh, it's a little trailhead and picnic area and I'm pretty sure I found the queen. I'm hiking up into this little alcove that is just south of where we parked. And I'm hiking up unmarked trail. Oh my gosh, I think I actually see it. There she is. It's so impressive. I'm like over the moon right now with, uh, with excitement. This thing is huge. Um, from a distance, it looks like it's maybe a foot tall, but it's probably closer to like three feet tall. So very impressive. Uh, I can see why it's called the queen. It's got this nice ring of dots that look like a crown. So freaking cool. This is a great little pit stop on the way to Hanksville. Finally today, our first stop for photography, a small little location about maybe two football fields called Little Egypt. And it's one of my favorite types of things to photograph the American Southwest, which is hoodoos. Now around here, uh, they're pretty incredible. These are pretty massive cliffs with these balanced rocks up behind me and in a real impressive one right back here good lord so we're going to explore around this place it's kind of mid to early afternoon sun is super harsh and the clouds are non-existent so we're just going to stop through here and look around a little bit because we're going to be passing back through here on the way out of this trip so fingers crossed we'll get better luck and for now we're gonna enjoy this place and find some cool pictures and just enjoy the beauty. I tell you, I, uh, I found this really special hoodoo very tall probably the tallest one here and it was way up at the top of one of the washes probably a good half mile with a decent gradient and totally worth it even with these completely blue skies i think it makes for such an incredible image because the blue really does contrast with the lovely sandstone textures and colors here so uh, i'm really digging this image i've got a composition lined up with the nice eroded kind of mud 
And then just off to the right side, I have the massive hoodoo standing there. And there's a little bit of mountain off to the right side, but I think it uh, the clutter of that kind of offsets the clutter of this foreground with the kind of rocky, eroded feel. And this place is incredible. Uh, I'm having a feeling that this trip is gonna be a hot and sweaty one because the landscape here is just pure high desert hardly any shade to be found at least midday maybe late afternoon we'll get lucky and early morning but it's going to make for uh, uh, a tough trip but uh, i'm looking forward to it because already we're, we're getting some great images now it's just another i think it's 20 miles or so to hanksville we'll top off the the jeep and then we'll hit factory butte that's going to be our stop tonight for sundown and sunrise i want two chances at this location just to see kind of what happens with the light there so let's uh finish up this image here and then hit the road another cool roadside stop here this incredible rv abandoned had some real neat stuff inside check this out After a long day of driving and some incredible locations, we've arrived at the most amazing campsite right to the east of Factory Butte. Incredible location. The wind has kind of started to pick up, but I think it will probably die down after the sun goes down. Off to the west there, probably another 15 minutes or so, that sun will be down completely. But right now, this image I have is pretty fantastic. I've got this beautiful leading lines of this kind of wash in the foreground, gently being hit with this nice golden light. And then kind of in a silhouette is Factory Butte. And then on the upper third, I have a nice starburst uh, that I'm working on right now. I think it needs to get a little bit lower to really dial it in. But I think it's gonna make for a first fantastic image kind of with a silhouette look because tomorrow morning it's going to be a whole new world here with the sun coming up from the east and illuminating this place in an entirely different way so Well, we have a pretty good start to this southern Utah road trip. This is the end of day number one. Stick around and subscribe to the channel because day number two is coming right up. So it is the morning of day two of this southern Utah road trip and the early morning light is starting to pop off. The sun is uh, slowly rising to the east, but there is a little bit of cloud on the horizon. So we're not getting that direct golden light on the butte itself, not yet anyways. I think maybe, you know, 15, 20 more minutes, um, there'll be a, a small gap in the clouds and some light will peek through and we'll get some really amazing shots. But I'm still at the location that has these massive black rocks maybe grayish, dark gray. And I'm up on this little hillside here because the butte is just in front of me here. And I kind of have it framed by this left, I'm sorry, this right side edge of these kind of dark gray rocks. And then 
The butte itself should let it be lit up with some golden color and that'll make a nice contrast for the photo. Now, off to the left side, I have just a bunch of lines coming up from that kind of drainage area that's off to the left that all lead up towards the butte itself. So I think it'll make for a pretty dynamic image once that light starts. Day number two is off to a killer start. When that sun came out, that drone footage looked so cool with all those like ripples in the washway from the, from the butte itself. So incredible. Uh, now we're headed to actually a bonus spot this morning called Moonscapes Overlook. I was talking with another traveler yesterday afternoon and he mentioned this place that's just literally across the main road. So I'm gonna go check that out while the sun is still relatively low in the sky and see what kind of images we can get there because it really is bonus location. Let's see what we can find. This was a fantastic recommendation. You can see these beautiful cliffs back here and these nice little towers all along here have incredible light this early morning. This actually would have been a fantastic sunrise spot, but being that it's so early in the day, I'm getting some fantastic images. In a minute here, I'm gonna launch the drone. I think we'll get some epic footage. Cool location, I'm glad that guy recommended it. Well, we are back on the road heading towards our final destination today, which is going to take several hours because ultimately we're heading into the Cathedral Valley on the north end of Capitol Reef National Park, headed towards the Temples of the Sun and Moon. And I think along the way there's going to be a lot of things to look at, explore, and photograph. So uh, it's about 11 o'clock now, so we're on the road. And it's actually a really decent road so far. I stopped and talked to a couple of, uh, you know, big rig over, overland vehicles that were leaving. And they said the road is awesome, pretty much the whole loop if you were going to take it. And I don't know how much I'm going to do. I'm definitely going up to the sun and moon. And uh, we'll see. Today is shaping up to be pretty dang beautiful. Uh, more clouds in the sky today than there were in the last day and a half. So very excited about that i hope those continue to build and we get some killer photos for sunset and throughout the day today so let's hit the road we got places to go not a bad drive beautiful countryside all along there and quite challenging especially for photography because the area is just so vast uh, it makes for uh, difficulty in just kind of showing scale and and that kind of thing but we're at the kind of final destination if you will first stop is this amazing location behind me here 
called Glass Mountain. We're gonna check that out because it looks incredible. And then you can see back here, the showstoppers, Temple of the Sun, Temple of the Moon. Very excited about looking and photographing at those two amazing structures. So let's check out Glass Mountain, then we'll head over. So I've been looking around this Glass Mountain for a little while now, and it is so impressive and unique, I'm not quite sure how to photograph it because in essence, it's this conglomerate of these glass type stones with these interesting layers and colors. And then you have all of this like mud and dirt mixed in. So it's kind of muddy as an image. It's not really something that really pops. And so the grand scheme picture, I don't think will do this thing any justice because it just kind of looks like a brown hill when you photograph it that way. So what I'm doing is I'm focusing in on these intricate patterns that are created with the uh, glass and the dirt and the different angles in which they all meet each other. Very, very interesting. Loving these abstract images. So I'm gonna continue kind of work in this area because it's it's been a lot of fun. The, the, the grain of this glass almost resembles like wood. So it's very fascinating depending on what little section you photograph. So let me show you a few of those images from just shooting around this place for details. Well, I've been walking around scouting the Temple of the Sun and the Moon and I gotta tell you, they are spectacular from just about every angle. However, you need to get a little bit further away if you wanna show how dynamic and massive they are within this landscape. So what I did was I found this really cool spot. Let me show you here on a map of how to get here because it's a little bit tricky to get to and there is no you know, trail system or even a marked trail. You might see a few footprints uh, heading back in there, but. I gotta tell you, the views from there are incredible. So let's get back in there and I'll show you some cool compositions. That's where we're headed, right up there. About a half a mile later, you end up between this massive rock this massive rock, cathedral style as well. And then this is the Temple of the Moon, smack dab in the center. Now I'm probably about 50 to 100 feet back from this opening and it makes for a fantastic image. However, if you turn around 180 degrees, there's a bunch of nice hills you can climb up and get a little bit more distance so you can get the two foreground uh, cathedrals in the shot as well as Temple of the Moon. And I'll show you a couple images from there, but let me show you how to compose an image at this location. So what is so great about this location is you get a sense of symmetry when you align the Temple of the Moon within these two cathedrals on the left and the right side. And all you need to do to get that nice symmetry is move around kind of left to right, as we've talked about in the past, giving a little bit of breathing room to left and right sides and getting that temple moon right in the center, it makes for a fantastic final image. I'm using a 24 to 105 lens. At 24 millimeters, it actually provides a real nice frame for the final image. You could go wider or you can go further back to get more of the foreground cathedrals in the frame. Here's that final image now. Here's the view from that upper location. You can see all four cathedrals in the same image. It's spectacular.
How fantastic has day two been here in southern Utah? Check it out, these incredible locations, just like our final destination today, Cathedral Valley. I had a blast doing the scenic drive and exploring all of these amazing locations. Hope you have too, and I hope a few things have made it onto your bucket list for your next road trip. Well, today we start day three of the epic Utah road trip. I'm in the Bennonite Hills, a small section near Hankville with these beautiful layered mounds and lush red colors. It's uh, about an hour until sundown and the wind is picking up. You can see my hair flipping around, but uh, we're gonna get out here, find some cool photographs first thing and explore this place. We've got sunset tonight and sunrise tomorrow before we have to call this road trip uh, a thing. So uh, let's get out there, find some cool stuff. So we have our first composition and this place really is spectacular. It's got that kind of badland feel to it where there's cracked mud and leading lines from drainage everywhere. So. With this particular image, I'm capitalizing on all these lines that are going down into this little valley. And off in the distance, there's two mounds that are almost identical. So I'm putting those in the top of the frame to kind of have like this nice mirrored effect. Symmetry is very important with this image. So I'm gonna fire off a couple of shots and make sure I have it just right so that the final image looks incredible. For this next image, I'm using these beautiful rocks in the foreground with nice leading lines into the mountains above. Fantastic image. morning and we are up early yet again at this point in the trip I am absolutely exhausted but uh, the fumes I'm running on are are keeping me fired up because yesterday's sunset was so incredible I think I got some images that are going to be some of my favorites for the year um, and and that says a lot because this area is just so challenging to photograph because of the chaos you know but this morning i've got this nice little simplified image here of this giant mountain back here with all these nice layers to it and this is the biggest one within the area it's probably 800 a thousand feet tall and i've got this nice mound in front with these rocks just on top and it makes for this nice little symmetry with the rocks that are on top of the giant peak and no real clouds but we're kind of in that blue hour so everything has this kind of mood to it so i think it makes for a real nice image There were dense clouds on the horizon and the sun wasn't making much of a sunrise. So with this beautiful soft light, we began to focus on the fantastic textures of this location and the simple patterns that are created by it. Thank you. 
What an incredible morning and evening at the Bentonite Hills. I had a blast camping there and photographing there. I love that kind of uh, Badlands type landscape with the textures and the layers. It's, it's so fun to photograph. And what's interesting is I'm on the way out of here headed to our next destination and uh, I missed it on the way in. There's a NASA Research Center that is doing some uh, training for missions to Mars. And what's really cool about that is that's exactly how I would describe this place. It is a Martian type environment. The red planet fits with this red uh, location here. Fantastic. Uh, next up, we're hitting the uh, we're hitting the road. But first, we got to get down the Moki Dugway, which is a, a switchback towards the Arizona and Utah border. And then we're going to cruise through the Valley of the Gods and see what kind of pictures we can stir up this morning. But we got a few miles to make, so let's get after it. have arrived at the Moki Dugway, a terrifyingly steep road that takes you down into Valley of the Gods and to Monument Valley. Now there's an overlook towards the top end which is where we're at and I want to show you this little overlook and how far down we're going to go on this insane switchback road. <music> We have entered Valley of the Gods in the first formation here. Some people call this submarine rock and others say it is a woman in a bathtub. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Tell me which version you see. This place is so beautiful and there is a ton of interesting things to photograph. What I found is a idea for a panoramic image including multiple of these towers and structures. It's going to be fantastic. Now you'll notice immediately the center subject is that big tower or butte in the center of the frame and then on both the right side and on the left side, more interesting formations that are just a little bit further back, so they're not quite as dominant in the scene. Now, for this panorama, I've set my camera to manual exposure, and I've dialed in the settings for the correct exposure. Now, the sun is at my, at my front, which means the settings will be about the same from left to right as I pan through this image. And I'll be holding the camera in the portrait orientation or the vertical orientation to really maximize the resolution as I pan across. Now, with any panorama, you want to have some overlap between your images. Most recommend 25% up to a third. As long as you get enough shots to get the panorama correct, you're going to be fine, but it doesn't hurt to overlap more than necessary. So, uh, I think this is going to turn out for a fantastic panorama. And with the theme of this location, it really does remind me of the American Southwest. So I would like to do a kind of subdued saturation so it has that kind of old Western feel to it. So tell me what you think about this photo in the comments.
What an incredible trip here in southern Utah for three days. I had a blast. Uh, even though I was tired in the last couple days, it didn't seem to, to affect me because there's so much beauty here and so much potential for photography. Yeah. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I'll see you on that next adventure.